I'm sure you've heard a lot of people say that heat pumps don't work in old houses, that they're too drafty and there's no way a heat pump can ever work in an old house, or that uh, in cold weather conditions, heat pumps just don't work, or that you, you can't install radiators, you have to install underfloor heating, uh, and that's too disruptive for, for a large house and you, you'll never get it working properly. So today we're at a Victorian end of terrace house, uh, typical period house uh, with very little insulation. Uh, we installed a heat pump here three years ago. Uh, so let's go inside uh, and check out how well a heat pump actually works. So this house was built at the turn of the century. Uh, as most of the houses that were built around that sort of time, it is built of red brick. There's no cavity, there's no insulation. So it's just two, two red bricks uh, and that's the outside, that's it. So from a heat loss perspective, it's not great. Um, luckily, this property has new double glazing uh, installed, which will definitely help a lot towards that, that poor heat loss. When we first arrived here, uh, did the heat loss survey, uh, there were storage heaters here. The storage heaters were quite expensive to run, uh, storage out for, throughout the whole property. Um, the heat from them is inconsistent. Uh, you can often be very hot at night, and uh, by the end of the day, not have that much heat. So the client wasn't very happy with that, wanted, wanted to replace those. I was looking for other options, and not being on the gas grid, there weren't actually that many options. This property is a great example of a building which many would say is unsuitable for an air source heat pump, despite it being the perfect solution. So why is it that heat pumps get such a bad reputation? Myth number one, heat pumps don't work in uninsulated houses. The colder it is outside, the more heat's gonna get lost through this wall. As you can see in this room, we've got this fairly large radiator. There's another one over here. I don't think they're too large for the room. They do, they do fill the bay window. Um, but they don't look really that out of place. If this wall was insulated, then you'd probably be able to get away with just this smaller radiator here. But because there's more heat loss going through the wall, uh, it needs the, the larger size radiator. So what's really important with heat pump systems is that the low temperature the heat pump provides um, requires a very exact sizing of the radiators. And if it's too small, it's not the heat pump's fault, it's the radiator design that causes that room to be under temperature. But myth number one is false. Heat pumps do work in uninsulated houses. What's key is that a heat loss survey is done accurately and correctly so that the right radiators and the right heat pump is installed for the property. Myth number two, you have to have underfloor heating and radiators won't work. When we're designing heating systems to work alongside heat pumps, we can decide which what flow temperature to go to. The higher that temperature is, the more energy it's gonna use. But even still, radiators at 45 degrees is very efficient. We don't design it above that. Um, some, some go a bit further to 50 degrees, but uh, 45 degrees is still quite efficient. Underfloor heating is more efficient because you can run underfloor heating at 35 degrees. Um, but yeah, it still works very well with, with radiators. This house was designed to run at 45 degrees, which results in an annual running cost of £1,114. You can see on this graph how increasing or reducing that flow temperature has a direct result on the annual running cost. So just to summarise, myth two, also false. You definitely can put radiators uh, in a old property and they will work fine with an air source heat pump. You can put underfloor heating in as well you may need to supplement the heat with radiators also. So the running costs, um, of uh, the change in running costs between underfloor and, and radiators is actually quite minimal. Um, and even with radiators, you're still gonna be on par with a mains gas boiler uh, running cost. Myth number three, heat pumps stop working in the cold. So this is a Mitsubishi Ikudan 11 kilowatt. So it will produce 11 kilowatts of heat right down to minus seven. Uh, beyond that, it will still provide heat, but it's at sl slightly lower output, but it will keep producing right down to minus 19. So one of the kind of common uh, misconceptions about heat pumps is that they freeze up, and when they freeze up, they just stop working. So what basically happens here is the, the evaporator coil, it's colder than the air temperature. So when it gets to around five degrees, this freezes for a second, and then it does a defrost cycle, 
where it uses a very small amount of the heat from the house that was just put into the radiators to melt the ice. Uh, that then defrosts and runs off, uh, and then it starts running again. So as long as the heat pump's been sized with that in mind to make sure at minus two or whatever temperature it's, it's it, the design temperature is for the property, that it's still gonna provide enough heat and take into account these defrost cycles, uh, then it will definitely work through the cold. And it just comes down to, again, having the right sized heating system as well as the right sized heat pump. So a heat pump is a, a very economic way of heating an old building, but are there other benefits? So one thing that is a definite benefit for older buildings is that constant low background temperature. Commonly, uh, oil boilers and gas boilers are set so that they heat really fast uh, to a really high temperature, uh, say between six and eight in the morning and then when you get home from work and then they're off. So that constant change in temperature causes instability in the building. Um, and it also uh, doesn't drive out the damp in the same way that the low temperature constant heating system does. So this bay window, before the heat pump was installed, had damp issues. But we decided to put in uh, what's called a plinth heater, which is this heater right here. It's, it's this black grill on the floor here. Um, this is a forced air convection radiator. Uh, so there is actually water running through it, um, but then there's also a fan that pushes up the air through the, through the radiator. So this has reduced the damp massively in this area. Um, and yeah, definitely a good benefit for the old building. So we've gone through quite a lot of the, the sort of bigger heat pump myths that we come across quite often. Um, and as we sort of, sort of mentioned quite a lot now, it's, it really is the design that is important. Uh, the heat pump itself is efficient. It just needs to be put in correctly. So the proof's in the pudding really. So I just thought I'd show you how much um, power this heat pump has used in the past year. We can see that it's actually only used 4,455 4, kilowatt hours, which actually isn't a huge amount considering the size of this property. Before we installed the heat pump in the property, the storage heaters did actually use a lot more energy than that. And obviously some of that would have been at night, but the actual overall cost was more expensive than the heat pump. So if you live in an old property and you've been told that you can't fit an air source heat pump, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, we can provide you with a free heat loss survey and a free quotation. Uh, and if you like this kind of content, please like and subscribe. We will be putting up more and uh, covering all sorts from heat pumps, energy efficiency to solar PV.